Hey, this is Ina, and this is another Star Trek Deep Space Nine review. And it has to be probably, in all the Star Trek series, uh, one of my favorite parallel universe episodes. This episode is called Crossover. It was late season two, and I remember being absolutely spellbound when I first saw it as a, as a young kid, and I still enjoy watching it. This episode is a, a rough sequel to the original series episode called Mirror Mirror where Kirk and company go to a parallel universe where the humans are a tyrannical empire. Now, in this universe, uh, or it takes with uh, Bashir and Kira, the former resistance fighter on the station, and the station's rather smug doctor, who's actually one of my more favorite characters on the show. And there's some kind of action with them. It doesn't really matter. It's kind of some techno babble. They go through the wormhole, they're coming back from some expedition or something, and they end up in a parallel universe. And in this universe, they find, they end up on the station, which is still orbiting Bajor, and they find that um, an alternate version of Kira, who's actually in charge of the station, they find an alternate version of Garrick, who's not as interesting as the um, uh, regular universe Garrick. Bashir is taken and thrown into the mines, because humans in this universe are actually slaves. And Odo, the station security officer, is the overseer. And we see, we find out that from the alternate version of Kira, who's infatuated with her counterpart, that due to the interference of Kirk and company uh, a century ago, uh, it kind of reawakened some humane feelings in uh, the alternate version of Spock, who began reforms of the of the human empire, or they call them the Terran Empire, that led to disarmament and um, new peace program. But this didn't turn out quite the way the alternate Spock wanted it. The Klingons and the Cardassians joined forces. They overthrew the Terrans. They conquered them. And they established their own empire, and now humans are slaves. And on the station, things are different. We have human slaves, some of whom are trying to escape. We have Kira, the alternate version, who's a very sadistic, self-absorbed, sad, uh, horrible person. She doesn't really give a damn about anyone. She says she's treating the slaves humanely, but she executes them with, uh, if, for like very slight infractions. And uh, Quark, who is caught, this version, who's caught helping slaves escape, He's executed without really a second thought from, from Kira. And Bashir is talking to the alternate version of O'Brien, who doesn't want to get involved, because they want to get a, once they find out where they are, Bashir knows about it. They want to get a transporter and escape. But it turns out that all the transporters were modified, and they can't use that direction. And the alternate version of Garrick, he's scheming. He wants to bring uh, the, 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 this, the, uh, Parallel Kira down, replace her with the alternate, and eventually take use it so that um, he'll he'll become in charge. And he was willing to kill Bashir to accomplish it. There's also a parallel version of Cisco in this, who's not a slave, but is kind of like a mercenary captain. He goes out and does errands for the parallel version of Kira, who's actually also known as the Intendant. And he's kind of like he's also a self-absorbed kind of badass. And he doesn't really seem to care about fellow humans at all. He's just kind of scrapping by. And Bashir, you know, he's talking to O'Brien, trying to tell him about, because as it's becoming clear that they're not going to be let go, the intendant is pretty much self so obsessed with her counterpart that she's just not going to let him go. And it's just like, this is a horrible place. And Bashir's trying to tell O'Brien, you know, to help him. He's telling him stories about what the parallel... The, his universe is like about how the real O'Brien is actually like an engineer. He has a family, and of course there are, there's freedom and all that. And Kira, who is a resistance fighter, can't understand why these humans aren't fighting back. And we get some really cool speeches in this regard. She's trying to work with Tel Cisco, and she's she's really you can tell she's frightened and disgusted, and at the same time fascinated with her counterpart, the intendant who's so powerful, but it didn't go through the harsh life that she actually went through. And there turns out to be, at one point in the episode, an accident 
in the uh, mining facility that Bashir's in. Bashir uses this opportunity to, to tackle his um to tackle his security guard, take a phaser, and blow up Odo, which is kind of cool. He um he's running around. He he finds O'Brien, who's trying to fix everything, and Bashir's trying to tell him to help him. And O'Brien actually and O'Brien tries to ignore him, and Bashir says like you know there has to be a decent person inside you you know, to help me, and O'Brien's like, I am a decent man, it's quite a forceful, um, powerful line, because, you know, he's not willing to help him, he's afraid that he'll be killed, and Bashir says, well, you know, everyone here is already dead, in a sense, you're already slaves. So, Bashir, uh, through this kind of little exchange, the two of them actually work together, they're captured fairly quickly and brought to the attendant, who's having a party. I mean, why not have a party? And during the party, we kind of see, like, how even Cisco's crew of humans are treated. One of them accidentally spills a drink on some Klingon. And the Klingon just beats him, spits in his face. And Cisco, he's, this human wants to fight back, but Cisco's signaling him with his eyes, don't do it. So anyway, during the party, where both cures are there, Bashir and O'Brien are brought in. And it's explained about how, you know, the accident happened, Odo was killed. And Kira, the intendant, is rather mad about all this. Because she's like, how dare you kill your superior? You know, we treat, we treat, um, we treat our superiors with respect here. And Bashir is just flabbergasted. Like, how, you know, she's saying that his universe, where humans are free, has a lot to learn from her universe. And Bashir is just like, you know, he's he's not taking this crap. And then Kira, the intendant, asks um, O'Brien, why why did you help him? And O'Brien gives this really great, somber, kind of depressing set of lines about how, you know, where he's from, you know, you know, uh, I'm chief of operations of a station. I have a family, and you know, he's going. It might have been a fairy tale, but where, how would we have all been if history had just been a little different? And he just thought there would be something better than this. And the intendant is pretty much like, and this is a this is one of a very moving speech. And the intendant is also say, going on about how she had been showing mercy to these human slaves, but when she showed them the least bit of respect, this is how she gets repaid. So she got starts mouthing off about how these they're gonna he's uh, they're gonna die a slow agonizing death for all to see. You know, just showing the basic, brutal, open nature of power. And it's you can tell it's like just shaking everybody up, everyone in this party. She, at one point, she threatens to kill her counterpart from the re a real universe. And through the course of this, you can tell that Cisco himself is quite moved. So as, they're, as um, Bashir and O'Brien are being dragged out, you know, to be executed, Cisco just pops in with a gun and frees them, and Kira, the original universe one, goes out. They run, uh, alternate Bish alternate uh, O'Brien and alternate Cisco, they kind of go off on their ship, they're kind of, it's kind of implied, we're going to cause a little trouble here. And Bashir and Kira get in their runabout, they do some stuff, they go through the wormhole, and they end up back home. And this is a really great episode, because it really shows a parallel universe. It also shows, like, instead of kind of the more optimistic ending you would have expected after seeing Mirror Mirror about how that universe should have ended more like uh, the, the regular Federation one, it ends up even worse. Humans are enslaved. And we get these great examples of people operating under conditions of oppression, slavery, and about the desire for freedom, about, you know, kind of how history is open-ended. And as a historian and a Marxist, I very much uh, adhere to that view. We also get some really great examples of just parallel acting by some of the by the crew. Avery Brooks, who plays Cisco, uh, O'Brien, uh, Bashir, or rather uh, Kira Norris. We get two versions of her, and it's it's just a, a great example of you know how can you accept this barbarity, the, this oppression, and in a sense, it is kind of a moral tale, and but it really shows that these people even, that they're willing to fight back these slaves, and they start to uh, resist. 
and we really get to see great examples of like the decadence and the brutal display of power at the same time. How power uses both co coercion and consent. But all in all, it's really just a, a great gripping episode. I've probably seen it 20 times since it first premiered, and every time I'm, I'm always amazed at it. It's definitely one of Deep Space Nine's best parallel universe episodes. There's a few others in the same universe I don't think are quite as good. This episode really sets the bar. And, and the episode also, um, it's not just about solving all our problems with peace, understanding, and dialogue and all that. There's also the sense that sometimes armed struggle, actual open resistance is needed. And in this sense, it, it really has a radical critique in it. And I hope in the future, again, we ha more Star Trek episodes are coming up. I'm wondering if anyone has seen James Cameron's Dark Angel, which premiered about 10 years ago. It's a, a favorite television series of mine. I'd like to review some episodes of that. So this is Ina. Until next time.